Welcome to The Fix, I'm your host, Brock Bevel. This month's show focuses on technology addiction. Can it be used for the good? And can it be used for the bad? Can it be addictive? Absolutely. Does it affect all ages? Yes. These are challenges we face. So today on the show, I have April Whiting to address some of the concerns that we are experiencing. April, yes. I'm so excited. Seriously, I'm really excited about this one. Good. The last fix, we've, we've talked about addiction, uh, mm -hmm. pornography addiction, we've talked about opiates and methamphetamine right. and cocaine, which is, which is great for this community. Sure. But I want to talk just about something that I believe affects every single person. Absolutely. Not only in, in our community, but in our world and individually in our homes. Last, last, I want to make a disclaimer because last time I talked, I was kind of using the word parents, but yeah. I want to talk about grandparents or caregiver, anybody yes. in the home that's, that's has these technology issues. So sure. if you don't mind, I want to give you a little back background. I want to give you some props. You're the mm -hmm. only person in Sholo, Pine Top, <laughs> Navajo County that's been on a TED Talk, right? You said there's only- that, that I know of. <laughs> that's amazing. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. When does it come on YouTube? Um, it's going to go live any day. It's like a whole process that they have to do the editing and it's a little bit slower because of COVID, but any day it Good. should hit you. Congratulations. Thank That's you. honestly one of my goals, but yeah. I just want to make sure. So you are considered a expert in screen safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And screen, screen safety. safety. So I'm a screen safety educator. Okay. Basically. Yeah. Education hours throughout this community, other mm -hmm. communities yeah. geared mostly towards kids youth you know I do it all I love that's where my heart is I would say is in the schools with kids and um, the high schools but I I do it all I do parent nights um, community workshops sometimes I partner with law enforcement I'll basically go anywhere that they'll listen to me <laughs> right well good well so let's get into it let me let's okay. talk about it I know I'm let's the parent start. I'm yeah. the parent that when my kids aren't aren't handling their business, mm -hmm. I come in and just yank their phone from them. So when right. we talk about technology addiction, we're talking about cell phones, yeah, gaming, uh huh, computers. Yep. What else would you throw in there? Yeah, tablets. I would say anything that's a screen, okay. other than TV. The addiction process with the TV is a little bit different, but any other screen is included in this whole technology. Um, world so and and to preface this we've had some discussions and, and I've I've admitted that I'm not the greatest parent when it comes to, to screen <laughs> yeah. and, and what I have seen is is maybe we do a little bit of our babysitting and I'm yeah. sure there's a ton of parents out there that can understand mm -hmm. we work hard we come home and we're tired yeah. and so we give our children a screen yeah and we kind of allow them to monitor themselves Yep. What advice would you give to a parent like me that sometimes <clears throat> does that? Yeah, well, I mean, let's be real. I think we all do it. We both have a lot of kids. And when you come home at the end of the day and you're tired, it is just easier to hand over a screen. And then your kid is sucked into that screen and you have peace and quiet for as long as you want, honestly. But the long-term effects are really detrimental. The scientific studies that they've done on toddlers' brains who have a lot of screen time, um, their brains are underdeveloped. Like the white matter in their brain that handles your cognitive skills and all kinds of things, it's literally affecting the growth of their brain. Wow. So, so we have to be aware. That's okay. the first thing I tell parents is that when you know better, you do better. And a lot of times we just haven't known. These studies are fairly new. And so number one, just be aware. And it can be a lot of little things, just not having the iPad in your kid's reach, um, having device-free dinners. There's just a lot of things that you can put in place so that when you're tired, you don't just reach for the screens automatically. So that's good. So, so I, I actually run a recovery program and yeah. one of the one of the beliefs is this connection thing uh, yeah. I know it's uh, the opposite of addiction is not sobriety the opposite of addiction is connection we mm, talk about yeah. these connections and and there's been a ton of people that have ever researched this that if you can connect, connect us the addict with people with mm. more than one group of individuals maybe it's church maybe it, 
whoever it is. Yeah. But with children, it's a tad different, that connection process. Because for me, for example, last night I got a FaceTime, got to talk to my daughter in Cedar City, got to stream my grandchild. I mean, it's phenomenal the abilities right. that these screens have, but there's also mm -hmm. massive dangers. Can yes. you, I know there were some stats when they first came out, the suicide rate, can you talk on that? Yeah, so, and so I'm not saying that technology overall is just horrible. Like you said, there's so many good things that come out of technology, but there's, uh, there's always the, the other side of that, the light and the dark to it. And so there are, um, so the first smartphone came out in 2007. And then in 2009 is when social media hit the world and just exploded, Facebook being the first one. And that same year, teen suicide rates jumped 75%. And so that's not the only reason why, yeah. but there's definitely a correlation there. So what's the correlation? What do you, what do you feel? I mean, you're the expert, you're, right. you're the educator. <laughs> what would you say, yeah. like, why? Right, so you know, when I go into junior high and high schools, and I'll put that slide up about the 75% increase, and I'll ask the kids, tell me why you think that is. And they're all, their hands shoot up. Because they, and they all say, usually two things, so cyberbullying hmm. is huge. Okay. Um, and then just the loss of connection and also with social media, I call it a front stage and a backstage. So we all have front stages and backstages in our lives. Our front stages are everything that's going right in our lives, our success um, for the kids. You know, they ace that test, they make the team. That's our front stage. What and about then, parents? What do we post? <laughs> so we post like our clean house yes. and our kids that are looking so perfect and acting And then you have well. the other kid in the corner that's, yeah. yeah. And then the one standing behind you freaking out. Yeah, absolutely. All of us. And so, yeah, our backstage is our failures, our disappointments, our mistakes. And so with social media, what we tend to do is we all put our front stages on social media, right? Sure. But then what we do as humans is we compare everybody else's front stage to our backstage. And it can be really hard on us mentally, especially mm. kids and teens, but us as adults as well. So um, I think there's a lot of, well, it causes things like depression, anxiety, suicidal ideation. There's a lot that goes with it, for sure. I know if I catch myself doing that, I'm, I'm scrolling on sure, other yeah. people's and it's endless. You're <laughs> endless scrolling and you're yep. seeing mm -hmm. perfect people. Oh, absolutely. And it's things that you wouldn't know otherwise, like, you know, Tom from fifth grade took his kids on a cruise to the Bahamas and you're like, man, Tom's killing it in yeah. life. He's on a cruise and I'm here at home. And you have no idea the backstory to what he's right. going through. Absolutely. And it's like um, the quote that comparison is the thief of joy. And what is social media? It's comparison. So if you had, a, I'm a parent, you have a parent sitting in front of you, please, can you give me some skills? Because sure. I know we're all affected by it. We're all going home, Every we're seeing our kids. Uh, can you briefly mm -hmm. tell me why you got into this? I know you had a story with your son. Sure, can yeah, you? yeah. So the reason where this all began for me was one night a few years ago, I was tucking one of my kids into bed and I looked down and I realized it was the first time that entire day I was giving him eye contact. And as a parent, you're just like, oh, what am I doing? And it's because I had my eyes down on a screen all day. All my kids had mm -hmm. their eyes down and iPads and whatever. And that night I was like, hey, this changes gotcha. tonight, and that was the journey. But then we're screaming at our kids, go turn, you turn your phone off, you're on your phone all day, and then you walk upstairs, you lay down in oh, bed, yeah. and then this endless scrolling yep. on Facebook, Instagram goes. Yeah. So if you were to come into my home and educate yeah. me, I have mm -hmm. seven children, ranging from tiny to big, and I mean, I'm all over mm -hmm. the place, okay? Yeah, okay. Uh, what skills, what, what tools would you give me, you offer mm -hmm. me to start right away, instead of, right. because we know that the addiction to cell phones, yep. there is a 
dopiate or uh, dope. a serotonin mm -hmm. dump, a uh, uh, dopamine, dopamine dump yeah. that's coming in that is similar to the heroin high. Yep. And so it, I, it's going to take me a minute to withdraw. So if I take my phone from a kid, that's when we're getting the screaming and yelling. That's when we're getting yep. the fighting. I hate mm -hmm. you, mom. I can't give me my phone back. I'll do anything, mom. I'll wash the dishes. Right. And they want their phone back. So they're going yeah. through a withdrawal process, the yep. same thing. So teach me. Give okay. me some skills yeah. that I can use immediately in my home <clears throat> without causing World War III. Right, yeah. And it really is just a lot of little things. It doesn't have to be this big, huge ordeal. It's things like, my favorite is device-free dinners. Okay. Where all technology, even mom and dad's smartphones, go in a basket in a separate room. You sit down to dinner, eye contact with your kids. There's studies that have shown how important family dinners are okay. to kids and their development. And if you're sitting at dinner and everyone has their face in a screen, it loses that power. There's no connection. Mm -hmm. okay. And then I always talk to parents about a central charging station. We've got to take technology out of our kids' bedrooms um, for two reasons. If our kids have their phone or an iPad or whatever in their rooms, they are, that's when they're making really poor choices. Their defenses are down in the middle of the night. You have problems like sexting or pornography, so many things. Is right? there a problem in this community with that? It's a really bad problem in okay. the schools in this community, absolutely. So you know that, that we're experiencing here? Oh, oh yes, absolutely, right here in this community it's a huge problem with our youth well it seems like it's similar to addictions like when you become lonely right and you become yes. tired mm -hmm. defenseless depression hits in so yep. you're endless scrolling like you said i, yep. I love that there's never an end to facebook yep. it just keeps going yeah and we're comparing ourselves and then we kind of lose some of that inhibition Yep. Right, absolutely. and that's where these, these happen. Yeah, and that's when these kids are making these really poor choices, you know, in two seconds flat in the middle of the night can change the rest of their lives. I've seen kids lose college scholarships and jobs and have had really sad things happen to them because of two seconds of sending that picture or whatever yeah. it is. And so that's the first reason you should take technology out of your kid's room and then they're not sleeping because they hear a ping, they're not gonna ignore a ping. They Conditioned can't do response, it. right? That's right, what we yeah. all are. Mm -hmm. We do this as parents, we do the same oh, thing. Oh yeah, we're not, we're not above that at all, for sure. Pings, we reach over, yeah. it's like mm -hmm. rote memory. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and so kids will always like, I have the parents that are like, well, my kid says that they have to have it for an alarm. And I'm like, cool, you can go to Walmart and you can buy an alarm yeah. and plug it in. Good. Or, or white noise. You can buy a white noise machine. But it's so important to take that out, charge it in mom and dad's bedroom, and then you should know their passwords and logins. You just should if they're under your roof. Great advice. Yeah, and then so when all of these things are on the central charging station, that's when you can do your safety checks. I know parents can get mad at me real quick, but let me ask you this. <laughs> do you think parent, the kids should have your, your password? And log in? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I think it keeps everybody accountable. Yeah. I think that's actually a really good point. Yeah, absolutely. It can be, you know, you set family rules together and you get the kids' input. You're not just telling them what we're going to do. You ask them. I've heard that from do. my kid before. Well, how come I can't look at your phone yeah. while I'm an adult? And it's like the reason is is because uh -huh. maybe I'm doing something I shouldn't be doing. Right, yeah, Right. Absolutely. Great advice. So what I want to do is we're going to take a quick break. In okay. the next segment, I want to come back in and talk about mm -hmm. predators. Sure. And, and not only for the young adults, but also for adults. Maybe we can cover mm -hmm. some of that and talk about, like, in this community, what's really happening okay. in Arizona base. I would love to hear it. So we'll be right back. Welcome back to The Fix. I have April Whiting here to talk about social media, digital technology, and predators online. Yeah. I'm super excited. I'm getting I'm getting yeah. excited to go home and try to put some of these into play. Uh, I hope yeah. I don't mess it up. But uh, <laughs> and start World War III. But I would really like to, I, I mean, I have some background in this, being mm -hmm. a police officer. Uh, I've worked in Mesa, Phoenix, some of this with online predators, but I'm in no means an expert or have mm -hmm. a ton of information on, but so I'm, I'm gonna pick your brain a little bit sure. in ways that we can help parents, okay? Yeah. So I know there's some specific apps that we really have to be concerned about. I know mm -hmm. we download these for our kids, but we don't know the repercussions, we don't know the danger uh, right. that we're introducing. Mm -hmm. We're basically giving these predators a license 
to communicate with our kids and yeah. you tell them, call them tricky persons, mm -hmm. right? And you're actually yeah. writing a book? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes, because we tell our kids to be safe online, but then we don't tell them how. We're just like, be safe, make good choices. And they're like, well, what does that mean? And we probably don't know don't exactly know. what that means because yeah. we didn't grow up with a cell phone in our hand with all of these strangers and our parents, we can't, you know, go to the past generation and be like, well, what did you do when your kids were young? This is on us. Like we're trying to figure okay. this out. So we have to, number one, talk about it, teach our kids. That's why I wrote the book and I call it tricky people for okay. kids because they just, they understand that more than online predators. And so I always tell parents that you should talk to your kids five years before they're going to experience something. Okay. So five years before you think they're going to experience, you know, drugs or pornography or online predators. And so we should be talking to our kids around age three and four Okay. about tricky people. And so it's super important just to what's a tricky person. A yeah, tricky let's talk person, about that because I got to hear this. Yeah, it's yeah. somebody I tell kids, it's somebody that talks to you online that you don't know. That's usually really nice to you because when okay. we were growing up, the scary people were like the creepy guys in the white vans with the yeah, we knew what they windows looked like. yeah. blocked out, you know, and you just knew. Well, nowadays, tricky people look like the nicest people. They're super nice. They could be someone totally different than who they're saying they are. And they have this whole grooming process. Okay. That so how I, do you know? This scares the heck out of me for my I kids, know, you know? I know. It, it's really scary. And they are really tricky. So they'll start talking to your kids. They've learned all the verbiage that the kids use and they'll, you know, they just start befriending them. And how old are you? Okay, so which site? So, so yeah. if you're gonna say a site, because I'm hearing this is, I, I know yeah. my daughters are online, they're doing Minecraft, they have the headset mm -hmm. and they're talking to their friends, but I'm also seeing people they don't know that are joining right. in. So, yeah. so give me a hint, give me a hint. Yeah. What am I looking so, for? So unfortunately, they are, predators are anywhere where kids are. So they are everywhere from the three favorite apps for teens are TikTok, Snapchat, and Instagram. And those are online predators' very favorite places to be. And Which is interesting because Facebook is for old people. Yeah. That's what I heard. Okay. <laughs> Every time I go yeah. to high schools, if I bring up Facebook, they're like, that's for you and other old people. Okay. <laughs> so we don't need to worry about Facebook. <laughs> Not really. But Instagram, TikTok. Yeah. Snapchat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about them. Yeah. Because I know that probably the majority of our children okay. have those on yep. their phone today. 95% of okay. them do. Yeah. So what am I looking for? Yeah. So there's things like Snapchat, super dangerous app that it comes enabled with something called a snap map that anyone can see your location within feet. And there was a case that came out of Scottsdale of a man that was finding 12 year old girls off of their Snapchat maps and looking through their windows and whatever. And so, and you don't know that when you download that app, it's already on your Ooh. snap map is turned on. You have to go in and you have to turn Enable it, it off. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Or disable, sorry, disable mm -hmm. it. Yeah. All so, right. So, and then, but honestly, they're everywhere. I had a mom call me whose um, little four or five year old son was playing Roblox. It's a game kind of- For like four year olds, right? Yeah, well, every age okay. plays it. And their son was being groomed online and they had no clue. So how'd they that find it was out? happening. Um, one day she got on to play it with him and the chat thing popped up. And I mean, it was this horrible, thing that she had no clue about. And so I tell parents, if your kids are online, you should be online. Okay. If they're on Snapchat, you should have a Snapchat. Account. So I'm hearing a lot of red flags coming up because I'm thinking yeah. as a parent, I'm sitting at home hearing this. Yeah. I'm like, I have a problem. My kids have all three of these, mm -hmm. right? And so I'm alarmed. So how do I, how do I protect my children? I, I can't keep it from them. Sure. Because yeah. a it's, lot of times yep. I've seen them use their friends. Oh, yeah. And I remember my daughter saying we were going to Mexico and she goes, dad, I can't go to Mexico. I got to keep my, my likes mm -hmm. or my on Snapchat. Yeah. yeah. The, Whatever they're. The Name, we're old. Yeah, Here we go. I know. <laughs> but but I'm. It was so important to her. Yeah. The streak. The streaks. She had to keep her yep. streak. She was like 400 or something. I don't know. It was crazy. Yeah. So I'm hearing this. You're giving this great information. But how right. do I protect them so they have it on their phone? What do I do now? Right. 
So it's really hard to become an expert at all of these apps. I, I do this for a living and I can't keep up. Okay. The best thing you can do is become an expert with your relationship with your child. That's like sit in the trenches with your child. Have that open communication so when things happen, they're not like, crap, how do I hide this from my dad? They so I don't go home and I just take all these off. No, okay, uh -uh. I can't do that, right? Because yeah, that's our absolutely. connection to people, yeah. which mm -hmm. we feel is important. Yeah. So try to put in safety features. You can download things like there's an app called Bark that they monitor these apps, and if there's trigger things that come up, they'll alert you. Alert the parent. So yep. there's things you can do. You can be super proactive, but the number Screen one thing. Screen time, I understand mm -hmm. all that, but they yeah. can go around that. Yeah, they can. Our kids are smart. They're brilliant. Brilliant. They can get around anything. So become an expert in your relationship with your child. So that's why it's not unlimited phone. So one right. one of the one that I like is my wife is very good at this. Mm -hmm. If you're going to use your phone, you're you're in public. Yeah. You're in the open, you're at the table, mm -hmm. you're hanging out, you're not in your room yep. using your apps because we, we know that in addiction recovery, isolation yes. leads to depression, leads to us just mm -hmm. making just bad decisions. I, I've right. done it myself. Sure. Poor decisions because I was lonely or I was angry, I was sad, yeah. and I've allowed, I've, my inhibition dropped. Yeah. And, and our kids, they, mm -hmm. they don't have the technique or those skills yet to, to sure. understand how to combat mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So those, those are our big issues. You talked about grooming. I know we spoke mm -hmm. briefly about TikTok. Yeah. And I know that TikTok and this, this COVID-19 just skyrocket. Everybody yeah. was on TikTok. Mm -hmm. But tell me why it's a little bit dangerous and why I right. should be cautious with my kids, the grooming process. Right, yeah. Well, first of all, TikTok is just highly sexualized. It um, There's some really adult content on TikTok. They've just started to try and make some more parental controls to make it a little bit better. Okay. But um, it's, it's a pretty rough place to be on TikTok. There can be a lot of good on it. But so if a four-year-old seeing that over and over, he's just basically mm -hmm. It's That's a gateway to common. porn. Yeah. yeah. Okay. TikTok is a great gateway to porn. Okay. For sure. Yeah. So, and predators are all over on TikTok. Um, it's been a huge problem with them trying to get teens to, they start with asking for pictures of their feet and then they get $30 in their Venmo account. I've seen it over and over and over and then it just. Hold on, hold on. Say it again because yeah. I'm not aware of this. So, yeah, this, so, so, so. Who, the predators are asking our children for pictures of their feet? Yeah, just, okay. and they'll be like, you want a picture of my feet? Yeah, send Here's me your bucks. Venmo. I'll give you 30 bucks for a picture of your feet. Or I've seen $100 for a picture of your feet. Okay. So they send a picture of their feet, and then they get $100 in their Venmo account. Okay, so, then it progresses. And then it progresses in the grooming stages until they're so far in over their heads, they can't see straight, you know? And so there's a lot of things like that that happen online. That's why they're tricky people. So the key, they're actually getting paid for pictures of their feet? Oh, yeah. And, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I've had a lot of parents call me, and the reason that they were like, what's going on with my kid is because their kids all of a sudden had all this money to spend. Or they looked at their Venmo account, and there was like $500. Okay, let's just make If your kid has more money in the Venmo account than you do, there's an issue. They're getting yes. it somewhere. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. And so, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, there's just so many things that can happen when you give your child a device. I call it giving them the keys to a sports car. You've got to give them training. You don't just hand over the keys to a Ferrari and say, good luck, don't crash. So we've got to be teaching them all these things. We really are. We are we're giving them keys to, oh, yeah. to, to yeah. a lot. I mean, to a lot of good too, because they could do a lot of sure. good with it. Absolutely, yeah. And as kids get older, I talk about their digital footprint and how you need to learn to shine online because college colleges, that's what, that's the first thing they look at. They don't look at your SATs first anymore. When they get that application, they Google your name. That's the very first thing they do. And so you have- And the pictures of your feet come up or- <laughs> <laughs> Right. Okay. So you have to have a good digital footprint. And so you have to be making these good choices online and creating a good portfolio online, basically. So, so basically what I'm hearing you say is parents, grandparents, caregivers, they have to just become more involved yeah. 
they have to create mm -hmm. a connection with those children. Yep. They have to make sure that there's a lot of honesty in the home. Yep. Which yeah. is going to build your connections. Because mm -hmm. I could see a lot of parents are going to be like, I'm too far gone. My kids are too far yeah. gone. How do I read? I mean, mm -hmm. redeveloping that connection and bringing them back in yeah. starts, I love that, with that family dinner. Hey, let's yep. put our phones up for mm -hmm. 20 minutes. Yeah, it's just a lot of little things. It feels so overwhelming. And a lot of times we want to do nothing because we can't do everything. But you can just mm, start. Like Take, choose three things that you're going to focus on with your family and start there. You can do something for sure. So first one is device-free de device dinners. dinners. Central charging station. In your room, in your, in your, where you can watch. Yeah. Knowing their passwords. Yep. Yep. Their logins, mm -hmm. and them knowing yours as well. I think yeah, that's huge. I love that. That's, that's going to build great. some connection with your kids. Yeah, and it keeps everybody accountable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I do know that was my one of my wife's big triggers is when I start isolating with my phone, she automatically thinks mm. something's going on. Like, yeah. what's happening? Are you, you know, why are you disconnecting? Right. And I think we could see that with our kids as well. Yep. Because I, I feel like for me, my wife's the first one to feel it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and we know our kids, and so if your kids are starting to isolate themselves more in their bedrooms or they seem angry, it okay. comes out as anger a lot of times. All right, thank you so mm -hmm. much. This yeah, was thank this you for was me. Uh, my mind is happy. <laughs> I'm, I'm leaving here. I good. hope this community loves this. Yeah, I, I may invite you back with sure. with your next. Anytime. Good luck on your your book. Thank What's you. the name of it? Can you tell Tricky the name? Tricky people. Tricky people, mm -hmm. and it's for youngsters, right? Yep. It's for kids about five to ten. I love that. Mm -hmm. Thank you for watching The Fix. I'm Brock Bevel. If you know someone who is struggling or affected by addiction, there's hope. There's always hope out there. Help out there. Please don't give up. You're important and your life matters. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.